Hi, welcome to Japan by Food. I'm your host, Shizuka Anderson. Today we're in Higashi Murayama City on the west side of Tokyo to learn about the craft of sake brewing. We're actually here today at Toshimaya Shuzo, which is the oldest sake brewery in Tokyo, established in 1596. So we'll get an up close view of how they actually make sake, and at the end, we'll even get a chance to try five different types of sake that are brewed here at this brewery. So let's go check it out. あの、実際にお酒作っているところの歴史ってあの、教えていただけますかえっとですね、え、年前はですね、え、創業が1596年、ね、400年以上前ですね。え、で、東京では一番古い、え、酒屋さんということですね。なるほど。すごい、すごく
split it up into different uh, smaller amounts in order to ferment it. Um, and if we split it up into 2.5 tons, then it's a fermentable amount, apparently. So that's how they make it. It's a little bit more of a longer process, but that's the only way to make sure that you can make sake. All right, so now that we've mixed the, the rice, we're gonna see how they actually press it. And they use the machine right over here. So what we had just been mixing up there, uh, the rice and the koji together, and the water, that becomes something called moromi. And that is coming out through the tube, and then it goes into this machine. Very interesting. So in Japanese culture, it's very common to use the leftover rice from the sake making process in various cuisines. Um, I'm not sure if we do that with other alcohols in other countries, but this is very common in Japan. And uh, based on the type of sake that we made, the flavors are also different. So this is basically you can enjoy two things from the sake brewery, the sake itself and also the sake kasu or the sake remaining pieces of rice. So this is the final product. This is the sake and I'm going to get to taste it. I'm really excited. じゃあ、いただきます。うん。すごい、なんか深い味ですね。美味しいです。It's mm. really good. I I've tried a few different kinds of sake before. Some are varying from like very very sweet to a little bit more sharp and and almost bitter. This one is kind of like in the middle. There's a little bit of sweetness, but there's also that um, sharper taste as well. So you get a little bit of a stronger kick of the alcohol, but it's really good and it's a really deep flavor to it. It's really interesting, after trying, after actually tasting the koji itself, I can understand how the flavor of the koji influences the taste of the sake. You can really actually taste the koji flavor in the sake. So that's something that's really cool for me because I'd never known what koji tasted like before this. So I think I've experienced or have learned a new way to enjoy sake, which is really great. Tasting the actual flavor of the koji itself. This is a, a really old well. This is fantastic. I've never seen a well like this before. This is amazing. It has like a, a wheel, I imagine, to pump up the, the water. This was used until 50 or 60 years ago, and it's the oldest uh, well here at the brewery now. And they've still preserved it, which is amazing. It's really amazing to look down into this well. It goes 15 meters or so underground. Wow, so I mean, this might have been around for about 120 years as well. Really amazing piece of history right here. This is actually the oldest building in the entire sake brewery. They've kept the original building itself. So if you look up at the roof, you can see that the roof of the old building is still inside this brewery. So they've built the rest of the brewery over it. So we've just come upstairs into this 120 year old building and right in front of us is something called the kamidana and it's basically literally translated to God's shelf. And uh, this is where we would pray. So in this building, it's not only Matsuo-san, who is the name of the God, we also have little protectors um, called Yamori, which are geckos. Geckos in Japan traditionally are, are known to protect homes. They're kind of the protector of a home or a building. You can really feel the, the history and the tradition that's continued after all of these years especially still having uh, the god of sake in the sake brewery itself and still paying respects. I think that's a really beautiful thing. This is the 
Omozuro. They actually have real sake bottles <laughs> um, as the decoration on the on the kamidana. Really cool. Okay, let's pay our respects. Deva. Niakushu. Niakushu. Hai. Onegaishimasu. All right, so now we're back out here, and we're going to be trying some of the famous sakes that they have at this brewery. Uh, so let's see what we have today. Kyo wa douyu o sake o. Ja, mazu wa ano dochira kara nomimasu ka? Hai. Arigatou gozaimasu. Ja, kochira de. Hai, onegaishimasu. Arigatou gozaimasu. Alright, let's see how it tastes. Mmm. It really does have a very like fresh and uh, easy to drink um, quality to it. And I guess that's the uh, the quality of the, the ginjo because it's a very pure uh, sake. So it's very, very yeah, fresh tasting and clear. Mmm, very good. It has a really gentle sweetness to it as well. Wow, I'm really excited to try this one just because it's this is the most traditional sake that they have with the traditional style of brewing the sake. And it's all done by hand. So let's see how it tastes. <laughs> I don't think I've actually tasted a sake that tastes like this before. It's um, how do I describe it? It's it's a little bit more acidic and it's a little bit. It has a little bit of an acidic aftertaste to it, so it's really interesting. But it does have a, a slight sweetness to it as well. This one has been sitting for quite a long time. These are the fresh sakes, and they've been. They're bottled as soon as they're made, but this one has been sitting much like a wine for many years. So the, the first thing that I just noticed is that it's not a clear color. It's actually like kind of a, a brownish, a brownish color, like a brownish yellow. So it's just because of the, the sugar content in it. Um, and then when that acidifies, then that becomes this kind of brownish color. Very interesting. I'm, let's see how it tastes. Mm. This is really good. Um, it really reminds me of the flavor of kokuto, which is like a, a black Japanese sugar. They use it in a lot of traditional Japanese sweets. And it really just tastes like that sugar, which is striking for me. I guess it's because of how the, the sugar has been used in the sake itself. お酒っていうのはやっぱりこうコミュニケーションツールだと思うんですよね。で、これは世界共通してそうですけど、1万年以上前からね、人間はこれをね、毒、アルコールは毒、ね、生き物にとって本来毒ですけど、あえてそれを
changes drastically depending on how it's made, what kind of bacteria is used, what kind of water is used, and all of that affects the flavor so greatly and you can enjoy so many kinds of sake. And as he said, we can use that to enjoy communication with one another as well. And uh, yeah, there's just so many ways to enjoy sake and it goes well with so many different Japanese cuisines. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed learning about sake today and see you guys in the next video.